It's the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas time for gamers, where we either get groundbreaking announcements of games and we don't get to play them for at best a few months, or worse, several years, or the secret snooper sneak into your house on December 22nd and hand you the receipts for the presents your parents bought for you for the occasion to spoil the surprise and ruin the fun. Super Mario T is here to bring you guys my E3 2019 predictions and speculate primarily on the Nintendo side of things, what to expect and hope for announcements and games, and try to contain hype levels as June 11th draws closer. Before I dive in, there's been a massive eruption of leaks and rumors as expected in this day and age, but I myself have been able to remain blind and ignorant of such and hope to keep it that way until the day happens. Though it is going to be hard considering how is Nintendo going to top Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated getting announced? I mean come on fellas, it's the peak of Spongebob gaming that exceeds Minecraft and Fortnite. Joking aside, let's get started. So we have a whopping 45 minute direct confirmed for the show at noon Eastern Standard Time with no specific gameplay focus. This is kind of insane as Smash Ultimate took up over half of the direct last E3 with no specific game highlighted and a little extra time compared to last E3's direct. That's insane. Like I'm getting flashbacks to E3 2017 which is pretty good. There's a lot of room for variety in games and franchises, especially first party ones since it's E3, and that's pretty exciting. Off the bat, Nintendo has confirmed four different games will be playable on the show floor, being Pokemon Sword and Shield, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Legend of Zelda and what I like to call it Link's Reawakening, and Luigi's Mansion 3. And with this information, it's highly probable all these games, primarily the ones with no concrete date being Zelda and Luigi, are guaranteed to release this year. Let's start with Pokemon, as I think there's a chance they could reveal some new details in the Direct, but we'll likely see new Pokemon and gameplay stuff during the Treehouse in particular. Because we got that Pokemon Direct a few days ago, I highly doubt we'll get anything new regarding the game during the Direct outside one or two extra details, like how Pokemon Let's Go only had a segment where Reggie brought up how Mew is in every Pokeball plus you buy. Something as minuscule as that, or maybe a slight overview in a sizzle reel fashion. Otherwise, I can't see us getting more Pokemon news until the Treehouse happens. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, that'll probably be brought up as I believe it comes out September this year. I might have that date wrong, but seeing it's an exclusive and I'm sure I heard fall of 2019, it'll likely be mentioned. Same for Zelda Link's Reawakening, as it'll likely be our holiday title and I'm sure we'll get more comparisons and looks at the game, with it being a remake of the Game Boy release, and we'll get our stylistically divisive, yet fun and charming top-down Zelda remake. Lastly, Luigi's Mansion 3, which is becoming more and more likely to be a big late fall release date as we're getting a demo for it. All I want for this game is for Portrait Ghost to come back and for the gameplay structure to be a lot like the first game on GameCube. I know it's sensible for the system it was on, less so since the original got remade for 3DS, but I wasn't 100% sold on Dark Moon's multi-mansion mission structure as it really broke the pacing for the game. The original had a down pat, having multiple Portrait Ghosts with four bigger ones serving as proper boss battles. Speaking of which, why, why haven't they bought them back? They were one of the best aspects of Luigi's Mansion. It was amazing how they were omitted from Dark Moon. They had personality, they added lore and historical background to Mario's world and its characters. They were all unique. I'm praying to the gods that the undead in Luigi's Mansion 3 get proper treatment. This can kind of stretch the regular ghosts too. This is kind of a nitpick, but I hope the regular ghosts get a slight redesign. Like Dark Moon, they seem super generic and basic in design. The green grunk ghost, the big buff red ghost that deal lots of damage, the lanky blue hiding ghost, sneakers also look similar to greenies. Like the original had more variation and distinction beyond color and stereotypes. The blue ones were big, they looked fat, but they smashed the ground and did major damage. There was a green monkey ghost, there were waiter ghosts, Mr. Bones, ceiling ghosts, ghosts that choked Luigi, the little pink flying fish like ghosts. Even some of the blue and pink regular ones had elemental factors. There was a big slew of big and little ghosts in Luigi's Mansion, all with unique characteristics and more bouncy, charming designs. If Polterpup is any indication that Next Level Games is working on this game, and Polterpup's like the exception in my opinion because he's cute, then I'm keeping these hopes to a minimum. I'll be shocked if it plays more like the first and less like the second. And one last thing, this may sound even more nitpicky, but can we please make the game look darker? Like Dark Moon, it seems to be going for a more jagged, bright, cartoony look and less realistic, detailed, antiqued, and aged. Like, this is Luigi's Mansion, a game that's supposed to be dark, scary, spooky, dim, horrifying, etc. like most Halloween horror settings. Dark Moon and even this game so far looks so bright, visible, and non-intimidating. 
I'm talking about a Mario game, not like Until Dawn or Resident Evil levels of Nightmare, but I want to at least feel like I'm playing a genuine Halloween game with its main emphasis being spookiness and eeriness. Luigi might as well shouldn't have that flashlight as in every room you're in. You can very clearly, visually, and brightly see everything. The atmosphere isn't what the game's trying to capture. And I know the game is in development, but wouldn't that emphasize how these hopes have a chance of taking place? At least the latter half involving the game's brightness and the ghost design? The gameplay structure and the portrait ghost were a feature I've wanted since the unveiling, but I really hope Next Level is taking the criticisms Dark Moon got to heart. I never said it was bad, but it's not what I personally prefer going into a Luigi's Mansion game. With the demo games out of the way, Let's discuss some safer predictions involving games we know about. I doubt Mario Maker 2 will show up only because the game comes out in 3 weeks, but that could warrant a quick mention of it because it's coming super soon. I can only see Mario Maker 2 getting mentioned if there's another style hidden in the wakes, because there's an open slot next to 3D World in where it lists the different styles and the title states extra styles rather than the singular extra style. Unless that's some mistranslation or it could be DLC down the road somehow, there may be another game style for Mario Maker 2. As for what it could be, I'm betting on either Mario Land 2, Super Paper Mario as extremely unlikely as that is, or mostly a Super Mario Odyssey style. People have been bringing up Mario Land 2 as a reasonable candidate. I saw a Super Paper Mario mock-up, though again, that's extremely unlikely, though that would be cool. But to me, Mario Odyssey seems like an obvious candidate since there's a massive amount of gameplay and level design potential with how many enemies and elements are in Odyssey, how much of the gameplay you can expand with the capture abilities, how popular Odyssey is, etc. It seems like the logical approach, but this is assuming Mario Maker 2 has another style to be unveiled. The only other way I can see it getting mentioned is if Nintendo decides to bring it up it will have online local multiplayer with friends, because that lacking feature garnered a surprising amount of backlash. It's a stupid one without a doubt, but it's not a deal breaker IMO. Either that or they announced the return of the mystery mushroom and the costumes they omitted from the first game, as that was another insanely popular feature which is bizarre to take out. Even if the third party costumes and obscure costumes got trashed, there were still a dozens upon dozens of first party costumes. I'm shocked they got rid of them altogether. If it's a multiplayer issue, where players have multiple of the same outfit, they could outline the players in colors like Smash Brothers for 3DS did. If there isn't a fix to the online multiplayer, a mystery costume update, or especially a new style, then yeah, I don't think Mario Maker 2 will be shown. If it is, I'll only expect them to mention how close it is to release. Fire Emblem Three Houses, however, likely has some more gameplay elements or characters to talk about briefly, and considering that game comes out a month and a half from now, it'll likely be brought up, maybe demoed. I also believe we'll see more Damon X Machina, as that comes out soon, and Astral Chain, as that comes later this year, as an interesting exclusive made by Platinum Games. I don't think we'll see Bayonetta 3 because they seem to be taking more priority over Astral Chain, and Bayonetta 3's release got changed from 2019 to TBA. It's likely still in development hell, I'm assuming, and it's just taking a while to make. It was announced a few years ago, and we haven't gotten Jack since. And I couldn't give you an answer regarding Pikmin 4 even if I wanted to. This game was teased like four years ago, said development was almost done four years ago, and nothing. Nothing came of it. Seems like a super heavy thing for it to be a misinterpretation, and it's garnered a lot of attention for the past couple of years. I doubt it's false, and if it was Hey Pikmin all along. I have absolutely no clue if Pikmin 4 even exists. I want to say it does, but it's a case of it'll likely happen, it's just we have no idea when. I'll assume it won't pop up for argument's sake, but you got me there. Like Pikmin 4, do you even exist? One game we never got a proper unveiling of is Mario & Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. The game got screenshots posted in a magazine, I think, and they haven't said anything on it. News sources claim it's slated to release winter of 2019, and it seems reasonable looking at the screenshots and how snazzy Sonic, Mario, and Eggman look in their new attire. It's also been a while since the last Mario & Sonic at the Olympics, being Rio 2016. There are two major things I want from this game. One, bring back dream events, as those were omitted in Rio. 2. Make the characters you introduced as boss-like characters or rivals in the winter and especially Rio games playable. The dream events were my favorite thing about the Olympic titles. Playing these Olympic events with Mario and Sonic characters and Mario and Sonic settings with rules pertaining to their respective franchises. My love for Rio kinda dipped after knowing that. What's more is Rio introduced 14 new characters, 7 each from Mario and Sonic, and none of them were playable. You could go against Rosalina, Diddy Kong, Nabbit, Toad, Larry, Wendy, 
Dry Bowser, or Sticks from Sonic Boom, Rouge the Bat, Espio the Chameleon, Jet the Hawk, Wave the Swallow, Zavok, and Zaz, but they were only playable in one event each. They were even guest characters who weren't playable at all that appeared in the overworld like Birdo, Big the Cat, and Cream the Rabbit. Why not have all these characters normally playable in all the events like everyone else? It was a massive advancement for the series, but was kind of a letdown. You can have them as rivals and bosses, but why not unlock them after beating them initially? I don't know. Seems like the best thing for these Olympic Games to maintain, dream events and more playable characters across all events. Alright, let's get to a big question. Will Animal Crossing be at this E3? I think it will. It's been 9 months since we heard Animal Crossing's coming to the Switch, and we've seen nothing on this game. It's still slated for 2019, Animal Crossing is also a huge cash cow. I'll be shocked if we don't get anything Animal Crossing related announced. They've been sitting longer than Pokemon fans waiting for Sword and Shield news, and all we have is a title and a release window. I think it's time we get Animal Crossing details. I also still believe in lieu of Metroid Prime 4 getting delayed, we're going to get a Metroid Prime HD trilogy on Switch, for newcomers to get into Metroid Prime, and to alleviate old fans who have to wait several more years for their long-awaited sequel. It's the smartest move for Nintendo to give Metroid fans, and considering they announced Prime 4 two E3s ago, announcing an HD trilogy would generate some optimistic hype among fans and newcomers alike, along with boosting sales of Prime 4 when it finishes. I think now is a good time to announce such a thing, and if it doesn't, I think it's inevitable prior to Prime 4. Here's another thing that is more of a wish rather than an expectation. Because Next Level Games is likely making Luigi's Mansion 3, I don't see Mario Strikers getting a sequel anytime soon. However, with how big Bandai Namco is, I think it's possible they could come back and collaborate with Nintendo to create another Mario baseball game. I say this because of how popular Mario sports games are. Super Sluggers is within the top 5 best sold Mario sports games, and it's been over a decade since. God, how much I would kill for a new Mario Baseball or Strikers. With Tennis Aces wrapping up DLC in the next month, baseball seems like the next step for Mario Sports given how much potential it has, how many locales can be inspired for stadiums between Galaxy and Odyssey, and how many characters Mario's amassed now since 2009. Imagine having Rosalina and Pauline as playable characters in a Mario Baseball game, along with all the Donkey Kong characters from Sluggers including K. Rule with his Smash look. Cranky Kong, Nabbit, Professor Egat, Cappy, Honey Queen, Luma, a new Donker, a Lock Lady, any NPC from Odyssey really, the Penguins from Mario 64, Spike, a Chain Chomp, the Brutals, Madame Brood, the Koopalings, Dry Bowser, Fawful, Cacletta, Midbus, some Wario characters like Ashley or Mona, even other Nintendo properties like Link and Zelda, or Kirby, King Dedede, the Inklings, or even Ness and Lucas from Earthbound and Mother 3. With Mario Baseball, you can go balls to the wall with a massive amount of characters, even if they're basic and standard or super out of the blue. We have five different babies in Super Sluggers, including Baby Donkey Kong, Goombas, Paragoombas, Koopa Troopas, Shy Guys, Monty Mole, Piantas, Nokis, the Kremlings, a Wiggler. These guys are some of the most basic NPCs and Mario characters you'll ever come across, yet they're playable in Mario Baseball. They can do these options, and people would be crazy about them, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe already has crossed over with three different Nintendo franchises being Zelda, Splatoon, and Animal Crossing, so it's not like I'm speaking the impossible, whereas it's much stricter and more specific with Smash Brothers. Just give me a sequel, man. Mario Baseball's awesome. I think we'll get something Mario related. We usually do every E3, and I don't think it's just the Olympics game. Now here I got a big one. We're most likely going to get a Smash character announcement as well. It's been well over a month since Joker dropped, we just got a patch, and there's been nothing on the second character of the Fighter's Pass. As for who this character is, and I've stuck with him since day one, Banjo-Kazooie will be the next character. We'll get some banjo music along with a banjo stage. I believe this is possible because of several factors. Exclusive Games is heavily hinting at a Banjo-Kazooie revival of some sort, with a model and hiding the possibility of a remaster collection. Alex Davis of First Four Figures is also hyping up something as he's been invited to Microsoft's E3 conference. Banjo-Kazooie is literally one of the most popular reasonable picks for Smash DLC. Banjo being a highly prominent icon in the 3D platforming genre alongside Mario during the N64 days, Microsoft and Nintendo low-key being friends with benefits with how many of their games are on the Switch, being Minecraft, Rock League, especially Cuphead of all games, crossplay between said games, and Sony's going to be absent this E3. Nintendo and Microsoft are going to be the big dogs this year. This is like the perfect opportunity for Nintendo and Microsoft to announce a Banjo-Kazooie Smash reveal, or any Microsoft character for Smash for that matter, and I think it's possible this could be announced at either Nintendo's E3 presence or Microsoft's. It seems like a Banjo revival is on the way as we've seen multiple old icons be revived, and Banjo seems like another good candidate. 
What would also sweeten this Sunday is if there is a remastered Banjo collection of some sort and it winds up coming to Switch as well. Microsoft's could be all, oh, you can have Banjo on your consoles again, but only if we could put him in Smash. And considering the rich history Banjo's got with Nintendo, it sounds like a valid scenario. Either way, I do think a Microsoft character is going to come to Smash Bros., and Banjo's the best bet we got. That's not all we'll get regarding the second fighter pack, though. I think we'll also get an extra mode as a free update like Stage Builder. Because I doubt the team made 79 original stages for each individual character, I don't think we'll see Target Test come back. Instead, Home Run Contest seems likely because similar to Stage Builder, it was questioned on whether or not it would return or not. And of the side modes, it seems to be the easiest to develop. People like it, so you wonder where it's gone. We'll get our second character, being Banjo, the stage, the music, and Home Run Contest returning. But wait, there's possibly more! Considering we got three Smash characters announced as DLC for Smash 4 in 2015, I don't think it's outside the realm of impossibility to get two character announcements, one for a soon release being either now or within June or July, and the third one gets announced now, dropped in the fall. I'd say only expect one character to be announced, just to be safe. Two character announcements for DLC seems to be pushing it, I know, but I don't think it's too unrealistic to expect. It'd be a wild time, and as for what that third character is, I'm gonna guess either Spyro, the Dragon, or Crash Bandicoot. It's tricky predicting the DLC because as with Joker, they really are going extremely out of left field with these choices. Crash and Spyro have a history with Nintendo, along with being revived IPs, being put at Activision's forefront now, so it would be cool and make sense. But to make things more interesting, whether she'll be announced instead of Crash or Spyro, and soon or later, I'm gonna piggyback off one of my best friend's hopes for Smash DLC. Shout out to Stardust DL. I'm gonna come out of left field and say 2B from Nier Automata is gonna come to Smash Brothers. Now, this game is not on Switch, but neither is Persona 5, 4, or 3, and all three games were represented in Smash Ultimate. Same for Cloud before FF7 came to Switch. Nier Automata is an incredibly popular game, was a contender for Game of the Year in 2017, and like Joker, it'd be almost exactly the same in terms of the amount of excitement it would bring considering the game's popularity and how far out of left field and insanely bizarre of a pick. Whether it's soon or later, again, I'm predicting 2B as my other character for the Fighters Pass. I'm giving up on Fjorm, Bandana D, and Gino. Fjorm and Gino I would love, and there is a possibility of a second Fighters Pass for these to try again, mainly Gino or Bandana D, but I have no clue where this DLC is going to go. 2B, Spyro, and Crash so far are my predictions for this pass, but that's assuming we get a third character announcement along with our second character this E3. I say only expect one, and I'm only expecting Banjo. To tie into that third character prediction, I'm going to say Spyro's Reunited Trilogy is going to be announced for the Switch this fall. Crash didn't come to the Switch until a year after it released, and Spyro following suit seems reasonable, especially with how well both trilogies did. Regarding other third parties, I can see Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle getting a sequel, but it being announced here or in the future is 50-50 for me that I think we'll, we'll get it another time. Ukulele is getting a sequel and that will probably be shown off for a bit too. Whether this is something for Nintendo's E3 or Sega does a thing of their own during it or after, it's a mystery as to whether or not something Sonic related will come this E3 or later in the season, announced outside of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. It's usually Sega that makes these Olympic games, but they've been developing the next Sonic game for a while now. I think they may do something for either this E3 or Sonic's 28th birthday and tease the next Sonic game. What that game will be, I'll save that for another video. It's been almost two years since Forces, and Sonic games usually take two to three years to develop, but I think we're due for a Sonic announcement of some kind. I think we'll get another 2D Sonic game in the not-so-distant but not-so-near future, but I think they'll save that and announce a 3D Sonic game soon. And of course, insert a couple third-party releases that exist or are coming that I don't know and or care about to mention that will be brought up in this Direct, likely in some sort of sizzle reel. For the real quick batch of wishes I have that I know aren't coming or like 99% unlikely to happen, still slightly hoping for my Kid Icarus Uprising remaster because damn it that game is amazing and getting a Switch remake would instantly fix the only problem it has, and that's the control scheme. Same for Paper Mario remasters, mainly TTYD, but hopefully 64 as a bonus. We all got our pie in the sky wishes in E3, let me have my obligatory ones from last year, I don't care if I gotta repeat them, those are marvelous games that deserve to be on Switch for one reason or another. These are gonna be my pie in the sky wishes every E3 until that happens. If SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, a fourth party licensed SpongeBob game is getting a remake, I don't think it's that impossible for Thousand Year Door to get similar treatment, considering how much more vocal the Paper Mario fandom's been in comparison. 
And lastly, I have one final prediction that's pretty bold and big. So, I do think we'll get something Mario related as we do every year, but I don't think it's just the Mario and Sonic game. It's possible for a new Mario baseball, but I have more confidence in another prediction. Drum roll, prepare yourself. I think there's a good chance Super Mario Odyssey will not get DLC, but a full-blown sequel. Now why I think it's possible is because if you look at Super Mario Galaxy, that game released November of 2007. A year and a half later, E3 2009 rolls around and we hear Super Mario Galaxy 2 is happening. Galaxy 2 reused the same graphics engine and gameplay engine as Galaxy 1. The crew just inserted lots of extra ideas they saved from Galaxy 1, while also having hundreds of files left over in the game go unused, meaning they had even more ideas to pull from while also catering the game to experienced Galaxy fans by making it harder. Galaxy 2 came out May of 2010, two and a half years after Galaxy 1. I think we're going to see something similar with Odyssey. The game came out October of 2017, and it'll be a year and a half since then, lining up with Galaxy 2's reveal. Odyssey's also the best-selling 3D Mario game, along with being, last I checked, the second best-selling Switch game right behind Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, or third, assuming Smash Ultimate surpassed it, which it's still top 3 highest attach rate, and it's likely the crew had lots of leftover ideas like in Galaxy. There are loads of concept art revealing this, such as Mario having a lot more costumes than in the main game, like a pit costume, a ship captain costume, toad and toadette costumes, a rapper outfit, a soviet russian outfit, a viking outfit, birthday outfit, nutcracker outfit, maid outfit, a goddamn high school anime girl outfit. Mario could have worn a lot of other costumes if the staff got more development time. Rosalina was apparently conceptualized to being a guitarist in New Donk City in a spanking hot casual black tee with jeans, Bowser was supposed to have a flying car as opposed to an airship, Isle Delfino was on the concept map for Odyssey, but the island and texture for the Odyssey's globe were cut out in the final game. The staff had loads of ideas that I think they can expand them into a sequel like with Galaxy 2. They have the game's graphical and mechanical engine, and Odyssey's like the best looking Mario game, I'm sure they can easily get away with using the same engine twice. I think there's a lot of potential for new captures and kingdoms, I might make a video discussing what I want out of an Odyssey sequel, because Galaxy got one, and now Odyssey's the most popular 3D Mario so it seems inevitable. Along with altering the moon count, making the game harder, and altering the moon objectives whilst making more worlds to explore, an Odyssey sequel will be incredibly amazing, and I think like Galaxy 2, it won't be a holiday title for 2019, but rather a spring title for 2020. If I'm wrong about this, that's fine, because I've no doubt in my mind we'll get one with how popular and successful Odyssey's become, and made the switch out to be. Some say we'll get an announcement next year with a holiday 2020 slash 2021 release instead, and that's perfectly reasonable too. Whew, that was a lot to swallow. That does go to show just how potentially jam-packed this E3 could be. Banjo-Kazooie for Smash Brothers, and potentially for Switch, Zelda Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion 3, Animal Crossing, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympics, a little bit of Pokemon Sword and Shield, a little Fire Emblem Three Houses, a little Mario Maker 2, Astral Chain, Diamond X Machina, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Spyro, other third parties, potentially a Metroid Prime HD trilogy release, potentially Mario Baseball, potentially a new Sonic announcement, and probably an Odyssey sequel. That's Mario, Zelda, Luigi's Mansion, Metroid, Animal Crossing, Smash Brothers, DLC, Fire Emblem, Pokemon if you count the Treehouse, and Sword and Shield Direct, and plenty of third parties in one E3. Even if two or three of these end up being false, that's a highly varied and very crispy E3 if you ask me. Any of these did you agree with? What predictions do you have? Do you think my reasoning's valid for any of these or no? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for plenty of E3 reactions and coverage as we approach the big conference. Stay super.